Howdy, Commander Zeko here. Today we're going to take a look at the impact of using Mikhail Kedrov as an inspiration for your battleships. And we'll also have a more general discussion on the impact and importance of turret traverse, specifically for BBs and a little bit in general as well across cruisers and destroyers. So Mikhail Kedrov's base trait, Vicious Circle, goes up by five one hundredths of a degree per second. Now that doesn't sound like a whole lot at first, but when we, when we start getting into it, you'll really start to see how impactful that is. Going up that much per level of mastery means that it'll top out at exactly one degree of rotation per second when he's 16 Legendary 4. Now, at this phase of the game's lifespan, you're probably not going to quite get him all the way maxed out unless you really love playing him on the Soviet battleships and you're like a Chad of Ostok main or something. But functionally maxed for right now in the game's life cycle is, I would say, 16 Legendary 2. For a commander like Kedrov, you know, your quote-unquote brawler builds. We call it brawler builds because they have the brawler perk in slot 1. The reason you'd want to bring him to his base rank of 16 is for Master Mechanic. Once you get this to 16, it gives you plus 2 charges of Repair Party, and especially when you consider the way that the Soviets work with their damage control, limited charges of that, having more impactful and more numerous heals is incredibly important when surviving the HE, Spam Menace, and Flood chances out there. So. I would say Kedrov functionally maxed right now is 16 Legendary 2. If you're in a position where you're buying triple crates all the time or you're just perpetually stockpiling 900,000 blue week after week to buy a commander, you could get him to Legendary 3, but again, that's only going to help you with an additional 5 one hundredths of a degree of rotation per second. So you'd have to ask yourself if 7 additional commendations is worth that amount of rotation. But if you're already getting him to like level 14 for use on the Soviet battleships, it's not that big of an ask on the insignia to bump him up to 16 to get that additional heal charge to make them that much more effective. So since 16.2 or 16 legendary 2 is functionally his max, this is going to mean that his base trait of vicious circle is going to give you 9 tenths or 0.9 of a degree of rotation per second at that 16 Legend 2. Now his base trait, Vicious Circle, is a rare base trait that gives a flat bonus. Now if you think across the rest of your roster, pretty much everybody else gives percentage buffs with their base traits. Kedrav here joins a very small class alongside Sims from the US battleship lineup. His fellow Soviet base commander, Von Essen, and Azure Lane event commando, uh, commander Otago, as the only other commanders in the game whose base trait, as of right now, gives a flat type of boost rather than a percentage-based boost. Now, that isn't like super important, whether it's a flat boost or a percentage boost, but what this ends up meaning is that its impact on ships, you just have to kind of calculate it a little bit more, you have to think about it in a slightly different way. It sort of often works kind of inversely to how you might think it might work, where, you know, like for example, Sim's base trait is actually more impactful as a percentage the fewer hit points you have. It's more worthwhile to, say, put Sims as an inspiration on a destroyer because his flat HP bump is giving you a greater percentage of what your HP pool originally was on a destroyer. And he's almost virtually useless, again, as a percentage on battleships. Sims we're talking about there. So when we're talking about these flat bu boosts or flat uh, perks, you just got to keep that in mind that it's not a, a direct translation one-to-one -one across the board Whereas sometimes, more often than not, the percentage-based commanders, you know, it's just like, yep, it's going to be 5%. Yep, it's going to be 4%. Vicious Circle will have a greater or lower percentage boost 
based on the original stat, you know, the baseline stat of the Turret Traverse for that ship. Now you will note here that my Kedrav is only 8 Legendary 2. His current Traverse speed buff is only half of a degree per second. So it's exactly at mastery 10 of 12, just a little over, you know, what I'm calling sort of functionally maxed right now. So he's got a lot of room to grow in terms of his ability to boost your battleship turret traverse. So keep that in mind, we're going to take a look at a couple examples here of the impact that Kedrov can have and just as we look at these numbers just be mindful of the fact that these numbers have a lot of room to grow as I level up my Kedrov. So we're first going to take a look at the Leon here as an example. Now I have taken off my Kedrov inspiration but I am running Joajard on here with gyrating drill bits. So a Joajard with gyrating drill bits on here you can see at my current build level is 41.9 seconds on the 180 degree turn time for the main battery turrets. And now I've swapped in Kedrov as an inspiration to my 11 legendary one Joajard. So keep in mind that gyrating drill bits has quite a bit of room to grow as well. It's only level mastery 2 of 4, but just by slotting in my 8 Legend 2 Kedrov, we've dropped the 180 turn time on the main battery turrets to 37 and a half seconds. For those of you that aren't great math surgeons, that's a difference of 4.4 seconds, or as a percentage, 11.8%. Just think about that, that's 11.8% with a basically half leveled Kedrov making that difference. So if we were to think about him at, you know, that functional max of 16.2, that'd be roughly eight and a half, eight and three quarters, somewhere in there, uh, second improvement, or roughly 21, almost 22% improvement on the 180 turn time, changing nothing else about Joajard or modules or anything else like that. Next, we'll take a look at the Nagato. In my navy, it's piloted by a currently leveled 12 legendary one Takagi. So that means gyrating drill bits is mastery three of four. So that is influencing these numbers here. But without the Kedrov inspiration, you can see there the 180 degree turn time on the Nagato's main battery is a flat 36 seconds on the nose. But when we slot in my eight legend two Kedrov, we can see that the 180 turret traverse time on the main batteries of Nagato drops to 32.7 seconds. Again, for the non-math surgeons out there, that's a difference of 3.3 seconds, or just a hair over 10%, 10.1% of a change. So at, again, that sort of functionally max 16 Legend 2 for Kedrov, this would be a roughly 6.5-ish second difference or just a little over 20% of an impact. So we saw, you know, 21 and a half, 22% impact on the Leon, and just a hair over 20% of an impact on the Nagato. Huge impact just by slotting in an inspiration on Kedrov. But I've saved the best for last. You can see here on the tier six Soviet battleship, the Sinop, the base turret traverse on this ship is 60 seconds. Pretty terrible in my opinion, and it would feel like the <laughs> turrets were basically mounted on top of glaciers if I had to run this boat with a 60 second turret traverse. But as you can see, we've slotted in our 8 legendary 2 Kedrov, who is running crisscross in slot 2. So we're stacking that crisscross skill with his base trait, bringing the Synops 180 turn time down to 40.9 seconds. That's just shy of a 30% reduction with a, you know, basically half leveled Kedrov. Crisscross has room to grow, base trait has room to grow. That's going to be probably pushing somewhere in the 40, maybe almost 50% reduction by the time we get Kedrov all the way up to that 16.2 functional max level. So I want to give you a little practical real-world example of what that looks like on the Synop. Here in just a moment, you'll notice that I'm turning against the turrets. I want them to rotate over to the starboard side of my ship, but I'm turning the ship itself to port, and yet the turrets are able to keep up and actually overtake 
my turn. This is the power of reducing your turret traverse time or increasing the turret traverse speed, however you want to look at it, and how effective that can be. You can you can over you can turn against your turrets and they'll still be able to keep up and actually overtake the turn. I hear you out there, oh okay, whatever. Big freaking deal, Echo. So what? It's just turret traverse. What does that matter? It's not that big a deal. Ugh. Well, I was looking at that helmet up, but I was quickly able to get over to this Budyani. And he disappears relatively quickly. Disappears both in terms of spotting and from the game. And that was largely due to my quick turret traverse. I was able to get over there, snap that shot off before he dropped spot. Had I not had that quick turret traverse and couldn't get that shot off, I'd have, I'd have been sitting there waiting on the sluggish turrets. He'd have probably snuck in up against that island, tucked himself in there, and we wouldn't have been able to dislodge him. That would have been a very different game had we not been able to swing our turrets over, snap that shot off, and take that Budyani out, sending him back to port. Still not convinced? Well, sit back and watch this other Synop game that I've got here on Shards. Keep an eye on things in the background. Not going to do too much play-by-play -play on it, but Turtraverse will come into the factor a little bit here and there throughout this game. Not going to highlight it necessarily, but just keep an eye on it. Several other mechanics will come into play in this game as well and be important critical factors. So it's not all Turtraverse, but... We're going to walk through five of the reasons why you should be considering Turret Traverse as an integral part of your builds and why you should be considering Kedrov for your battleships and slotting him in as an inspiration to really maximize your build potential and your DPM. So reason number one is that in a game such as this where most commanders top out at you know roughly four to six percent max inspiration, I know there are a few exceptions to that here and there, but by and large, across the rosters, most of them are in that 4 to 6% range for their inspiration. Having Kedrov do, you know, as we were seeing, 20-ish percent when he's slotted in as an inspiration, sometimes even more, to a single stat, is a huge buff. You're basically getting, like, four guys' worth of inspiration out of your turret traverse slot. It's insane that that much bump in a given stat can come from a single inspiration. And that, on its face, should be enough to convince most people that Kedrov is worth it. But, if you don't think that Turret Traverse is a stat worth getting a 20% bump to, consider point number two, which is that Turret Traverse is a hidden component of DPM, especially on battleships. We saw it in that Budyani example, and we will probably end up seeing it again later in this game, is that you want to be able to shoot a target when it pops up. You've got to be able to swing your turrets over there, shoot it, knock it down. Playing into the DPM component of that is that you want to be able to have your guns on that target in between each reloads. On that Budyani example, it wasn't a perfect example of this because it was my first shot of the game, so we had the guns loaded. But for every subsequent shot of that game, this game, any other battleship game, you want to have your turrets on target, ready to rock and roll, when, you, when you're reloaded, like right there. That, sh that, sh uh, that reload cycle ended, I already had the guns at Cleveland, we take him down for first blood. You know, I was sweeping around, maybe somebody else is going to pop up. Cleveland wasn't popped up until basically at the end of my reload cycle, so I might have had my guns elsewhere, maybe back on Colorado, maybe even somewhere towards the Bravo cap, but he popped up, we were able to take him down. So having that turret traverse enables you to have your turrets on target when your reload cycle comes down, you're ready to shoot. You only get so many reloads, depending on what your reload speed is, obviously, on the battleship. It's, you know, at best, about 30-ish per game. Maybe a little over that on some of the really fast reloading ships like Charnhorst and Odin. But, you know, on Synop, for example, with a more than 30-second reload, it's even more critical. If you're talking like Arizona, Synop, Vladivostok, anything with a greater than 30 second reload, it's even more imperative that you be able to send those uh, AP shells down range right on reload. So, reason number three is that Tier 7 and Legendary, the modification slot 
four on those high tier battleships, that main battery modification, having Kedrov slotted in can take that uh, nerf that you get from that main battery modification of 13%, and Kedrov will actually overcome that 13% nerf leaving you with you know roughly five to ten percent better traverse even after you take away that nerf and you'll get that 12 percent reload boost that that module gives you so you get the 12 percent reload boost you slot in a kedrov you completely negate the nerf that comes with that module and you're still going to end up ahead on your turret traverse if you slot in kedrov so yet another great reason to take him as an inspiration slot, especially if you're running a lot of tier seven and legendary tier battleships and you want to plug in that um, main battery modification module. Reason number four to think about turret traverse and specifically Kedrov for your battleship inspirations is that it'll enable you to keep your guns on target in close quarters brawls. You know, I'm thinking you know, a lot of the German battleships and even the Soviet battleships, sometimes Americans are forced to get in really close. They have decently tanky armor. They can manage to get away with that a lot of times. But sometimes you can't even dictate the situation. Sometimes people just come around islands. Sometimes that's just what you have to do. Every nation's battleships occasionally get forced into sort of close-in, brawly situations. Sometimes you've got to be able to flip targets, you know, use the front guns on one guy, rear guns on another guy. You know, maybe get your turrets offset on the reload cycle, something like that. And being able to keep your turrets on target in those close quarter situations is critical. When you're doing, you know, a drive by, if you will, and if you speed past the guy and your turrets can't keep up, you've now just lost that perfect drive by broadside where you could have got a triple, quadruple citadel, dev struck that battleship, taken him out of the game, led your team to victory. Instead, your turrets are too sluggish. You miss the drive-by and now it's, okay, now you're shooting them in the stern or whatever for a couple of thousand damage on overpens, mostly ricochets. So that's a fourth reason to consider the importance of turret traverse and using Kedrov. Lastly, reason number five. This is a pretty advanced tactic and unfortunately don't have any examples of it in this replay. I'm actually personally not terribly great at it, but there are certain ships that are pretty well known for having somewhat squishy turrets and their turrets get knocked out with you know some degree of regularity and it's important during your reload cycle to turn your turrets away from the ship that you're fighting say example here I'm let's say I'm fighting this Colorado I want to make sure that my turrets don't get knocked out it usually comes into play more often when you're close range but just as an example you'd want to turn your turrets and I want to keep my armor on my ship and my hull angled in such a way but I need to then traverse the turrets away from the incoming fire to keep the slanting and sloping of the armor on the turrets angled in such a way that they are going to bounce more shells take less damage and be less likely to get knocked out. Ships like Jean Bart and Richelieu come to mind when we're talking about stuff like that. So when you're brawling or going bow in or you know just keeping a 10 15 20 degree angle in those type of ships it can be advantageous to then turn your turrets so you want to be able to turn your turrets keep them safe from incoming fire for as long as possible during your reload and then right as you're about to finish your reload unlock the guns swing them back on target shoot and then quickly get them back away from the target and re-angle them as rapidly as possible and you don't want to have to do this with your ship. You want to be able to maintain whatever hull armoring you need, to, or excuse me, you want to be able to maintain whatever hull angling you're doing against their incoming fire, but you might have to angle your turrets independently of that. Having a quick reload, or having a quick turret traverse, rather, on your main battery turrets can help you achieve this. So there you go, five reasons you should be considering Kedrov and Turret Traverse in your ship builds. One, Kedrov on his face quadruple the inspiration impact of pretty much anybody else. Turret Traverse is hidden DPM. Tier 7 and Legendary Module Slot 4s. Keeping your guns on target in close quarters brawls. And being able to angle your turrets independently of angling your ship's hull armor. 
all these and for other reasons too but those are the five five main reasons i would say that you should really be thinking about turret traverse and how that can really be a critical component of your builds and your play style will the rebuild here new legendary proximity perks kicking in right here keeping me alive against this odin i would have definitely died from you know the next volley yeah that would have killed me right there had uh this will to rebuild perk not come in so that was awesome the legendary proximity perks are not great but they're okay you know as i mentioned in my abusing them video with the double belfast double smoke you know they shouldn't really be relied upon but it was nice to have it here kept me alive keeps me alive and it allows us to win the game i don't know i don't think this one was going to be winnable if i'd have gone down right there so in all likelihood it contributed to and pretty much gave us the win uh we're able to you know soak up some more damage here rather than have this odin and Geniza now shoot at other people they keep shooting at me and you know we'll eventually go on to to take this one home I do want to make one last note about another related commander to Kedrov, and that's Madden. I personally think that Madden is a bit of a noob trap. Uh, if you're considering running Madden as an inspiration, uh, I would encourage you to run the numbers on his base trait inspiration on a given boat that you want to plug him into. You know, get a calculator out, do a little bit of math surgery, and calculate really what is the actual impact that he is going to have if I plug him in on this ship or this line or this commander. Personally, I think he's bottom of the priority list for the British or UK battleship commanders anyway. You know, you want to be leveling Cunningham for what I hope are obvious reasons, but battleship precision is arguably the most important <laughs> statistic. Uh, when you're plugging in inspiration slots. Pretty much all battleship builds in the meta include a Cunningham inspiration. Azure Lane Nelson is, as a commander, just in my opinion, strictly better than Madden. And one could even make a pretty compelling argument that Azure Lane Hood is a better commander than, Nel uh, than Madden, rather. When you consider her sort of hybrid options between survivability and accuracy. So... When you consider that he's pretty much bottom of the barrel in terms of using on the Brits and the fact that his base trait really doesn't actually get you all that much, I'd say he is a bit of a trap and I'd encourage you not to fall for it. If you want turret traverse, go Kedrov, which we've hopefully highlighted well enough here. And if you want reload, go with D Ravel. You gotta level those guys up anyway, you might as well plug them in. Well, let me know in the comments below what you think of all this uh, turret traverse and Kedrov usage. Thanks an awful lot for listening, everybody. I greatly appreciate it. And as always, stay salty, Commanders.